Voice acting is a career that looks much easier than it actually is. Or perhaps I should say sounds much easier than it actually is. Take it from me, someone who has to read scripts in front of a camera every day for a living, voice acting is tough. Long hours, countless retakes, and at the end of it all, everyone still thinks they can do a better job than you. But the truth is, not just anyone can do it, and there are many, many examples in video games showing exactly why some people are better off staying far, far away from the recording booth. I'm as clean as a whistle. Time to get dressed. Whether it's due to the directors, the scriptwriters, the actors themselves, or just gremlins in the studio equipment, video games are rife with moments that will bring a tear to the eyes of gamers. To protect the life cycle. Tears of laughter, that is. There are so many, in fact, that one video wasn't even close to enough to cover the subject. So on that note, I'm Ashton from Triple Jump, and here are 10 more ridiculous voice acting fails in video games. Number 10, Suikoden Tear Cries. Every once in a while, a game will come out where just about every aspect of it is perfect, except for that one little thing that just grates on you every time it shows up. Normally, it doesn't have to be a deal breaker, unless said one little thing happens to be the game's main character. Suikoden Tear Cries is a spin-off of the highly regarded series of RPGs, released for the Nintendo DS, that builds on the established mythology of Suikoden with a story about a young man uniting a band of heroes to fight against a great evil. The game reviewed well for its tight gameplay and well-written narrative, but one common point of criticism was the protagonist's English dubbed voice. But why us? You're the wife of the Mage Ward. You can just have the mage and troops escort you, can't you? For whatever reason, the main character of Tear Christ speaks as if he's severely over-caffeinated, tearing through his lines with the reckless abandon of a mother who's just realised she forgot to pick up her son from football practice. Potential fourth emperor's consort? You mean quota killed? Critics called the performance atrocious, as it makes some of the game's most important dialogue almost painful to listen to. Because you'd try to twist me around your finger so you can have everything just the way you want. You might think you're hot stuff, but when it comes down to it, you're no different than the Order. Seriously, forget the mana potions and phoenix downs. The only item this kid needs to stock up on at the shop is chill pills. Number 9, The Elder Scrolls IV, Oblivion. Bethesda games are as well known for their numerous bugs and glitches as they are for the sweeping expansive worlds they've created, and in some cases, perhaps more so. The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion was the talk of the gaming town when it came out, an epic fantasy sandbox adventure that gave players an unprecedented degree of freedom in building their characters and exploring the world. But as they say, the bigger you are, the harder players work to find something broken. I'm pretty sure that's how the saying goes anyway. With thousands of lines of spoken dialogue across hundreds of NPCs, it was impossible for Oblivion's voice acting to be perfect, and it didn't take long for a few of those imperfections to rear their ugly heads. The game is rife with technical difficulties, including characters who magically change voice actors mid-dialogue. We used to be anyone could visit her, but now it's off limits to the public. There's a rumour going around that the Undercroft may be haunted. Or repeat the same line twice to get a second take. We heard that thieves broke into the Arcane University, the Imperial Legion compound, and the temple all on the same night. Wait a minute, let me do that one again. I heard that thieves broke into the Arcane University, the Imperial Legion compound, and the temple all on the same night. These ones, of course, are not the fault of the voice actors, who overall did great work with the material they had, but are the fault of whoever wasn't paying attention in the editing room that day and let these goofs slip by them. Number 8. Chaos Wars Video games are a risky business, and even the most well-made product is never guaranteed to be a financial success. With that in mind, it's easy to see why studios would want to cut costs where they can, but some money-saving tactics simply aren't worth the trade-off. Chaos Wars is actually a crossover between several different companies, featuring characters from franchises including Shadow Hearts, Rolancer, and Gungrave, all dumped into the same world. The game got middling reviews in Japan, so when it came time to release in 
the West, a part of the world where the franchises were still fairly obscure, the localization team had their work cut out for them. Word of the game spread like wildfire across the internet, not for its quality, but for the absolutely laughable English voice acting that somehow managed to butcher every single line and inflection. I'm the king of Illusion. King Tanati. Chaos Wars is the stuff of legends when it comes to bad voice acting, as every scene plays out like a YouTube compilation. If you surrender, we'll let you go. You've gotten more sarcastic too. I won't surrender, but I will save the best for last. A glance at the game's credits reveals that several of the voice actors share the last name Jelinek, which just so happens to be the last name of Chris Jelinek, who was, at the time, the CEO of the game's localization studio. Ah, nepotism, it never goes out of style. Number 7, Castle Shikigami 2. Any game with a bad English dub can be funny, but it takes a really special game to reach the status of becoming known more for being a meme than being a game. Castle Shikigami is a notorious series among fans of the shoot 'em up genre, commonly known as Bullet Hell, wherein the player takes control of some kind of aerial craft and has to blast through waves of enemies whilst the entire screen fills with lethal projectiles. Though here, these ships are replaced with various individuals exploring a mysterious castle. There's actually a rather in depth story behind the game's events, though English-speaking fans may not realise it. The English release of Castle Shikigami 2 featured a slapdash translation that did a poor job of interpreting the content for Western audiences. It doesn't matter who you are. If I'm the perp, so what, P.I.? And with incredibly stilted performances propping up the nonsensical dialogue... Sorry. What? Don't get upset! The whole thing is basically a pile of gibberish. Quotes from the game quickly became fodder for internet comedy, and its legacy as a quality shoot 'em up was unfortunately buried under its reputation as a laughing stock. A newly enhanced port of the game, released for modern consoles, received a new, more accurate localization, but honestly, it feels like it's missing half the fun. Number 6, Valis 3. Advances in technology have opened up many new opportunities for video games to grow and become even more effective storytelling devices. But sometimes those opportunities are best left unseized. Case in point, Valis 3 for the PC Engine. Valis is a series of anime-inspired action platformers starring an ordinary Japanese schoolgirl chosen to be the wielder of a magic sword that saw a number of releases across the late 80s and early 90s, with the third instalment being released on two different consoles, the Mega Drive and the PC Engine. Both games are largely similar in their content, with the main difference being that the PC Engine version, boasting the added power of CDs, included full voice acting throughout the game, though whether or not that's a plus is open for debate. The evolution of life has always been the survival of the strong over the weak, so maybe it's the will of the gods that we invade the other worlds, eh Rada? The vocal work in Valis 3 isn't overtly comical or over the top in its badness. It simply sounds like the actors just don't care. Yuko, I've wanted to see you so bad. Who's that? Rogueless? It can't be. Or in some cases, like they're literally reading the script aloud for the first time. I am Zarud. Rogueless is unlucky. To be taken twice by a girl like that. While its attempt at capturing the spirit of an anime series with its cutscenes is impressive, none of the dialogue is even close to being lip-synced properly, and the whole affair has about as much polish as a primary school drama production. Number 5, Operation Winback. Metal Gear Solid was released in 1998 and was a landmark release both for the stealth shooter genre and for the presentation of voice acting in video games as a medium. Operation Winback, released only a year later, was similarly groundbreaking, but for all the wrong reasons. Originally released for the Nintendo 64, and nowadays considered something of a hidden gem, Operation Winback helped pioneer the cover shooter genre with slower, more methodical gunplay, and used cinematic cuts 
cutscenes to tell its story of a counter-terrorist unit with the unfortunate acronym of SCAT racing against time to stop the activation of a world-destroying superweapon. When the game was ported to the PlayStation 2, the developers added voice acting to the cutscenes, though perhaps they shouldn't have bothered. You okay, man? Yeah, yeah, it's nothing. See you on the ground, Jean-Luc. The voices of the characters in Wimback are hilariously at odds with the tone of the story being told, with characters cheering gleefully upon finding one of their own teammates dead. Maybe not. Tom left a message. He wrote it on the floor in his own blood. In his blood? Way to go, kid. Or trying to avert the death of thousands of people with all the emotional intensity of reading a shopping list. I want you to reposition the satellite 180 degrees and fire the thrusters. Sounds easy enough. Reposition 180 degrees and... Are you nuts? I'm not sure what exactly the heroes of Winback are actually trying to win back, but I have a sneaking suspicion that someone may have gambled the game's voice acting budget and lost. Number 4. Ark Rise Fantasia of the bad examples of voice acting we've covered in this list so far, most are nothing more than a dark spot on an otherwise good game, or at worst, ends up being the internet punchline for a few weeks. Ark Rise Fantasia's voice acting was so bad that it changed the way its publisher does business. Released exclusively for the Wii, Ark Rise Fantasia is a fairly straightforward JRPG, full of dragons, evil gods, political intrigue, and swords big enough to cut a school bus in half. For what it is, it's actually a rather decent game, though unfortunately it's only remembered nowadays for its English localization, full of voice work that would have worked quite well if the game itself was intended to be a parody. It's good to be back. How's mom's condition? Hmm, but she's been worrying about you. Some characters sound like they've got the emotional range of a block of styrofoam, while others react to every blow like they've been shot. Ah! The end result is laughable when the game itself is not meant to be, and the voice acting was the main point of critique in reviews. Reception to the finished product was so harsh that the publisher issued an apology and promised they would be working with a different localization partner in the future. I'm sure they wanted to change the business, just not like that. Number 3. Final Zone 2 Final Zone 2 is a game that begs two questions. Number one, if it really is the final zone, how did they make a second one? And number two, what the heck are the characters in the game even talking about? Here come the Rebel Army soldiers. There's no damage on the weapons. Let me show them some fancy action now. Like its predecessor, not so Final Zone 1, Final Zone 2 is a top-down run-and-gun shooter that gives players a choice between five different playable characters as they mow down enemies to complete their mission. Who these characters are and what their mission is, well, that's a bit harder to figure out, though not for lack of trying on the part of players. Final Zone 2 suffers from the double-edged sword of bad voice acting layered on top of a shoddy English localization that sounds like it was written in Google Translate. Did you hear the message right before the explosion? That was Randy Hansen who used to work for me. He said something like Zods. Every line of dialogue is a literal translation from the original Japanese, including the vocal music tracks interspersed throughout the game, and the voice actors sound as if they were just as confused by the writing as we are. My orders were to put down the rebel army. Bomber, I thought you were the one who revolted and don't always know what emotion to be expressing at any given moment. If something about that sounds familiar, it could be because Final Zone 2 was published by Telenet Japan, the same publisher responsible for Valis 3. The villain always returns to the scene of the crime. Number 2. Dragon Slayer – The Legend of Heroes Believe it or not, there was once a time, long ago, when simply hearing actual voices coming out of a video game was a mind-blowing novelty. Looking back on those games, now that they're old enough to be put in a museum, it's clear that time has not been kind to those relics. What's eating you, your highness? Did we really do the right thing? 
Dragon Slayer The Legend of Heroes is an interesting title, as it's both the sixth Dragon Slayer game and the first in the Legend of Heroes series, a franchise that has gone on to birth an intimidating number of offshoots of its own. Such a lofty pedigree makes it notable in the history of RPGs, but what makes it a notable entry on this list is its absolutely abysmal voice work. A fine morning to you, my lord. Good morning, Elias. The inclusion of voice acting was amazing at the time, but between the horribly affected accents and the graininess of the audio recordings, the actual dialogue is borderline incomprehensible. Wait a second, who are you? Hey, watch your language, fella. You're talking to the crown prince himself, Logan of Falling. No kidding, a real prince. Considering it released in 1989, at a time when competitors like Final Fantasy were still taking their first steps into larger stories, Dragon Slayer should be considered quite the technical achievement for its era. It would certainly have been remembered more fondly if they'd also thought to include subtitles. And number one, NBA 2K15. If there's one thing that the other entries on this list have proven, it's that hiring actual professionals to do the voice acting for your game certainly pays off. Just make sure those professional voice actors and not professional athletes. NBA 2K15 was just one of the many annual entries into the video game franchise based on the National Basketball Association that allows players to step into the shoes of their favourite players or even live out their own dreams of stardom by taking their custom player all the way to the top in the My Creator mode, competing alongside and against giants of the sport. To give the mode story an extra dash of authenticity, the NBA stars featured in My Career were voiced by their real-life counterparts, a creative decision that you yielded mixed results at best. You're right. He's right. We got too much talent and we work too hard to be playing like this. As good as they may be on the court, these athletes are not trained voice actors, and their performances varied widely, from passable to making us wonder how this ever got approved to be in the final product. You got all the skill to make a contribution, but the proof will come between the lines. Tonight, time will tell if you can help or not. It's proof positive that good voice acting is a job that requires skill, practice and hard work of a true professional. And in that sense, I suppose it is a bit like basketball. 